Today on In The Wood Yard, we're gonna talk about what's the right size saw for you to use. It's probably one of these. Here we go. So on my channel, I get asked all the time, Chris, what is the right size chainsaw? What size chainsaw should I get? What's the best size to get? What size do you recommend? I get asked a lot. Well, it depends. We're gonna talk about it today. I have a little bit of everything here as far as sizes. This isn't all the saws we have. There's another five or so we have in the barn there, but I kind of picked out size classes all the way up, um, showing kind of the variety of what's, what's here. So we're gonna start with the little guy down on the end. So the first one we're gonna talk about is this little guy. This is a little eight inch. They come in six inch sizes too. This is a little electric Olomo the company sent me. Now there's about a billion manufacturers of these little guys. They are handy. Now, who is this right for? This is right for maybe someone who has a very small yard and doesn't cut or burn firewood. So if all the person needs to do is to trim a limb occasionally or trim bushes, that kind of stuff, this is probably all they're gonna need. This is a little 21 volt. Like I said, they work, but not great. My wife uses this occasionally around the house. She likes it because it's real handy. Um, she said it, you know, it's, it's good for cutting stuff, maybe at a wrist size, and that's about it. And I've done that with this. Now the next one up from this is another one that the same company sent me. That's this little guy. This is a little uh, Olomo also, but it's a dual battery. And it's, so it's 21 volt on each battery. So total it's 42 volts. Uh, it's got a 16 inch bar, no 18 inch bar. And uh, it works. It got, has plenty of torque and works now. These you can get, um, I should back up here. This little guy right here, these sell for less than a hundred bucks. 60, $70, something like that, maybe 80. And like I said, there's lots of different brands. Um, this one right here, these sell for a couple hundred. If I remember right, like 220, 230, somewhere in there. And uh, they work good too. Now, this would be something maybe a little bit better for a person that's gonna cut a little bit of wood. Like if they're gonna uh, cut uh, in their, on their property, they're gonna cut some limbs and maybe cut a little bit of firewood for the backyard fire pit. But again, nothing real big, probably nothing bigger than maybe like a eight to 10 inch piece as far as the, the size of the, the log they're gonna be cutting. You probably could cut enough wood that if you, all you're doing is burning in a fire pit or burning in a fireplace, maybe a face cord, a third of a cord, maybe two a year, this would probably work. Eventually it might burn up on you. I don't know how long they're gonna last, but it's a nice little saw and probably good enough for a lot of homeowners that just don't need much of a saw. The other thing that these are really nice for is if you do have a small property and uh, you've got some lanes that you need to keep open if there's branches or trees that fall across, this is kind of a nice little one to have in your truck, on your tractor, in your side-by-side, -side, ATV, whatever, just to have it around so you can grab it and go cut some stuff. So they're handy, but this is not something you're gonna do any kind of production with, I don't think. The next one is this little 540. Uh, Husqvarna. This is a 39cc saw. This um, cuts pretty dang good, but again, you're not going to cut a lot of timber with this. This is more for limbing, um, and that's where people ask me, you know, well, what's the best saw to get? Well, if all you're going to do is a little bit of limbing, this would work. If you're going to cut just wood for yourself in your backyard where you're going to have a fire pit or fireplace, again, this would be all you're going to need. Um, if you got a bunch of other saws that are bigger, this is a nice one to pull out when you got to do some limbing. Like I said, if you're going to use a, a bigger saw to knock your trees down, use a little saw to do the limbing. The nice thing about these is they're light and you can handle them very easily. I think this weighs like, I don't know, 10, 11 pounds, it's not very heavy. And it works great. So there's this size saw. So again, proper size saw for the job at hand. Now the next size saw class, I do not have one here. I used to have one, I had a 455 Rancher, so it's the 50cc class. So this one being a 40, the next size up is about a 50, 55 cc. Whether you get a steel, Husqvarna, Echo, whatever brand you've got, the 50 cc is probably all around for an average person that's gonna cut a little bit of wood, maybe that's gonna have a big enough saw that they can heat their house with it, 50 cc is kinda on the lower end, and that's about the size that a lot of people will get because price-wise, uh, they're pretty reasonable. Uh, Size-wise, they're pretty easy to handle. They're not super heavy. They cut pretty good, and like I said, I've had one. Uh, I've ran quite a few of them. I got a couple buddies that have 50 cc saws, and that's all they have because they only burn a little bit of wood, so that's a good size saw for a lot of people. But the next size saw up, which my brother has one, he's got a 562, and that is a very nice size saw. That's a 60cc. So that, if I was to recommend one saw 
to an average person, it would be about a 60cc saw. 50s on the little bit on the small end, 70s on a little bit on the high end. Anywhere in there would be great. I myself, if I had to pick one saw, it would be a 572 or a 462 in the steel. Something that size or um, what's the Echo one? The 70, it's a 70cc size saw. That's what I would recommend. Good all around saw. You can do pretty much anything with it. My brother Ken, who does a lot of logging and has over the years, his favorite saw is this 372 because he's had them forever, decades. And the reason he sticks with them is because he uses them a lot. And when he gets one that breaks or something happens to him, he keeps it, takes parts off of it, he cannibalizes it to keep the other saws running. So that's a really good size saw. A lot of loggers, their favorite size saw is about a 70cc saw because it'll cut pretty much everything. 70cc saw, you can put 18-inch uh, bar all the way up to 24-inch bar, maybe even 28, and it'll cut just fine. That's one of the things that I should also mention. A lot of people, when they come to picking out saws, they think the bar size is the size of the saw. Well, no, you got to have the right size engine to drive that chain on that bar. So you got to go to your manufacturer, look up their specs as far as what they recommend for the size of the bar, as far as the smallest to the biggest. Somewhere in the middle is probably the right place to be for most people. Some people think that, oh, you got to have as big a bar as possible. Well, no, you don't. My brother Ken, like I said, he worked for years logging wood, cutting huge white pines, cutting big timber. Well, for what we have here in Wisconsin, because with a 20 inch bar, you cut from each side, cut your wedge out, you get a 40 inch cut, cut from the back side. If you work away around the, with the saw, you can get it to go down just fine. So you don't need a super big bar for the most part. I know people on the West Coast think y'all gotta have four foot bars or five foot bars like this big boy here. Yeah, maybe for their kind of wood, but not for everyone. Um, my favorite size bar is what you see here on my 592 and my 572. It's a 24 inch bar. 24 inch bar, if you cut from both sides, left and right side of the tree, gives you a 48 inch cut. That'll take pretty much any tree down. So there's that. And I think that when it comes to working in the woods, I don't like a great big long bar. This big boy here, this five footer, it's ridiculous. Uh, yes, if you're cutting big timber, you're working on the West Coast and you're cutting huge spruce or you're cutting um, the big, great big monster fir trees, or if you're cutting um, redwoods, yeah, then maybe you're gonna want a big saw. But that's not the average person. That's a very, very, very small segment of people that run chainsaws. Yes, they're pros, yes, they're awesome at what they do, but that's not most people. Most people, 50 cc to 70 cc. That's what I think, and it doesn't matter what brand. The main thing is, is that your saw runs and it's sharp. That's all that matters to me. I just happen to have Husqvarna's because that's what I have. So the next I saw, like I mentioned, was the 60cc saw, uh, like my brother's got. He's got his 562. The one that I have right here, which is my favorite uh, size saw, is this one. This is a 562, I mean, I'm sorry, a 572 XPG. This has heated handlebars. I absolutely love it because when it's cold out, the bar handlebars heat up and your hands stay nice and toasty warm. Now this saw, for a lot of people, they would say, oh, that's way too big, way too heavy. Yeah, it's got some weight to it. But when you learn how to cut, you let the saw do the work, you let the saw fall through the wood and uh, it cuts really well. So speed wise, now that's, that's another thing a lot of people don't think of. When you got a smaller saw, and I, this was true for me, when I first had chainsaws, I had little bitty guys. I had a, a Poulan, I had an Old McCulloch my dad had, I ran a Johnson my dad had years ago, and they worked fine. And then I bought my first, what I considered decent saw. I bought a Husqvarna 455 Rancher. Not a big saw, not a pro saw by any means, but it cut all the wood I ever needed for in the fireplace and for heating our house. And I didn't, truly heat our house, it was just for auxiliary heat. So I was going through five to six, seven face cords, so about two full cords a year, it was kind of average for me. And that was all the saw I needed. But then one day I was cutting wood on a buddy's land and my brother came out to help me because he needed some wood and I told him he could come out there and get some. He had just bought a brand new 576 chainsaw and I had never run that particular saw before. I'd never run anything bigger than like a 50 cc saw. So he was cutting, he cut the tree down and then he started on the butt and he was cutting rounds and I started on the limbs with my saw. By the time I had about half the limbs off, and it was a big, probably like about a 20 inch oak tree. By the time I got most of the limbs off, he had the whole truss of the tree cut up. 
and I couldn't believe how fast he could cut through the cuts. So the next tree I cut down and then I made the cuts on the butt and it was like my eyes were open. My brother Ken had said for years, get rid of that little weedy saw. Get a real saw, get a 70 or 80 cc saw, get something that'll actually cut. And he was right, he was absolutely right. Yes, it's heavier to handle, but you can cut so much faster because as most loggers know, production is everything. The faster you can cut, the more wood you can cut. The more wood you can cut, the more money you make. It's just the way it is. So that's why a little bigger saw is better for most people if you wanna do any kind of production. So the 572 that's sitting right back there, that's the one I would pick if I had to pick just one saw. Um, people, I've done interviews before, like when I was at the Paul Bunyan show, I asked people like, what, what would be your favorite saw, your number one saw if you had to use it the rest of your life? I'd probably pick a 572, maybe a 562, which in steel equivalent would be a 462 or a 400, right in there. Really nice size saws. As I get older, lighter is feeling better. Uh, so maybe a 400 steel or a 462 Husqvarna would be a really nice choice for most people for the rest of their life. And it would probably do, do everything they needed to do. Now the next size up we're gonna talk about is this one right here. This is a 592, which is a 91 cc saw. And uh, Bert also has a 390 that's in the barn and it's an awesome saw, cuts fantastic. My brother has a 395, which is kind of the equivalent to this. And this is the newer version of the 395. It's the five series. And uh, a 90 cc saw is absolutely awesome. The speed for cutting, the power you have, even if your chain gets dull, you can still cut because it's got that much power. It's got that much more speed in the uh, chain when it's driving. Now, in the steel line, when it comes to that size, you're gonna be talking a 661, which is a 90 cc, I think it's 90 cc if I remember correctly. I think it's the same size as these. And I've ran those, I ran three or four of those. They're awesome. Uh, the other one that's just a little below that kind of fits into a, a specialty spot would be the 500. And the 500 is an 80 cc saw, if I remember correctly. Awesome saw, cuts fantastic. A Little bit bigger, cuts real fast. Um, the power you have to the weight is awesome. So great saws. And then up from there, we're talking big boys. The 592, the 395, um, the 661, that's what a lot of the pros will have for size of saw and they work fantastic. Up from there, then it gets big. So this big toad sitting right here is the big boy. This is the biggest one I have. It's the biggest one Husqvarna makes. It's a 3120. The equivalent in a steel is the 881. Very big saws, they're 120 cc saws. So they're pretty serious. Now, there's some older saws and uh, some ones that have been through the years that are 100 cc class. I don't know the numbers of them. I have not run them. I, I don't know, I'm sure a lot of you are screaming right now at the screen, oh, I got this, I got that, well, whatever. I know there's bigger saws, but the a bit bigger size saws are in between the 90 cc and the 120s. There's 100s, 110s. I don't know which makes, models, manufacturers, but I know that they, they exist. This is more of a specialty saw. They only make a certain number of these a year. They don't sell a lot of them. They're not cheap. Uh, this saw brand new is about $2,000 if, if you're getting the Husqvarna 3120. If you're getting the steel, it's the 881. Those go for about 23, 2400, somewhere in that range. They don't give them away, but they're specialty in that they're for cutting big wood. The people that use these are generally three kinds of people. Well, four. First one would be a professional logger that is gonna be cutting some huge timber, stuff that is the big stuff, the big dug firs, the big spruce trees, the, uh, the big redwoods, um, mostly west coast. That's where you're gonna see this. The next type of people that are gonna have this are gonna be arborists, people that are taking down big, huge trees in people's yards big willow trees around here you know they get monstrous they get you know five six footers and they'll have these just for that or they'll have a giant cottonwood they got to take down uh, most trees in our area don't get so big that you're really going to need these very much uh, they do i know on the west coast but around here not so much the next people that are going to want something like this is someone that's doing an alaskan mill 
where they're running it horizontally and they're cutting slabs or someone that's making slab wood for like mantelpieces or tables or decorating they're going to use these where they're going to have a person on each end and they're going to run them um, on a rail of some sort whether it's an alaskan mill a true one or something that they've made themselves where they're cutting stuff horizontally on a big log uh, the next person would be someone like me i bought it because i wanted it that's pretty much it. We did use this on a video oh, about a year or so ago. We cut down a big ash tree on my dad's property. It was, uh, I don't know, 16 feet around. I think across it was, if I remember right, 58 inches, something like that. I know the bar just, it just, was just long enough to cut through that tree. Uh, it was 155 years old and we ended up getting, I think it was 16 or 17 face cords. So a little more than five full cords from one tree. It was a monster. Go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it. So that's what uh, we use this one for. But I mainly bought this just because I wanted one and thought it would be cool and have some fun doing videos of it. So that's kind of why we have it. Uh, but we, we've used it a few times. So this is the big boy. So like I said, this bad boy for me is pretty much just a toy. I have a five foot bar on there, 60 incher um, with the bar and the power head. This saw, if I remember right, we weighed it, I think it weighs 42 pounds, which is heavy. It's ridiculously heavy. It's not something you're gonna walk around and cut stuff in the woods with. It's something you carry and you cut a big tree down. Um, and then I've got the 592 right here, the 572, the 540. So a few saws, they all work and I recommend to you to get the saw that's best for what you need. What I recommend is you do not go to a box store and buy a chainsaw. My recommendation is go to a pro shop, whether it's a steel or a Husqvarna shop. Go where you're gonna actually get service. So if you've got a problem, they'll actually help you. You can take it in and they'll fix it. And you're gonna get their advice as far as what they recommend. If you go to a, a pro shop, you can tell them, here's what I wanna do, here's what I'm thinking of, here's my level of experience. Just be honest with them, don't go in there and tell them, oh, I, I'm a logger, when you're not. If you're just a homeowner, tell them, that's what you are. You're a homeowner, I'm looking to cut enough wood for my fire pit. What size saw do you recommend? What different models, what different brands? What are the qualities of them? What are the spe specific, um, things that, that they recommend them for. So that's what I would do. Go ask a pro. That's the best thing you can do. Hopefully what I just covered will give you some insight if you're just looking at chainsaws. Uh, if you're someone who needs a little bit of help, that's why I did this. Cause I do get a lot of questions on people want to know what's the size saw I should get. What do you think is best? I get asked that all the time. So hopefully this covered it for you guys. That's it for today, folks. Poke the buttons. I'll be back tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. with another video for you. If you can't wait that long, I got 1,300 videos on my channel waiting for you to watch right now. Good night, Irene.